Hey guys, just a quick update uh, on the state of the channel and everything. Um, sorry there was no upload last week. I was super ill. Um, wasn't getting out of bed. Uh, just ran out of time uh, to do that one. Sorry about that. But we're back this week. Um, slightly shorter upload this week. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, basically, we're working on something really, really cool next week. It's going to be um, a full, big... Um, edited, scripted, um, lesson analysis thing. It's going to be really, really cool. Um, I've even uh, had to buy a cloak for it. So you know it's going to be good, because who doesn't love cloaks? Um, so yeah, that's going to be up next week. Um, until then, I didn't want to leave you guys with nothing while I'm getting that next video sorted. So this week we're going to have a quick look at my current pedal board. My, uh, my fly rig that I'm using with Catfish. Um, look at the stuff I've got on there while I'm using that. Uh, so hopefully you enjoy that. And we'll be back with uh, fresh, new, exciting things next week. So, was, was that a, like a duck? What the f What was that? Um, <laughs> we'll be back with exciting new things next week. Until then, hope you enjoy this. Bye-bye. Okay, so, don't want to leave you guys empty-handed. So... Here is a brief look at the pedal board I'm currently using. This is uh, this is a travel pedal board uh, in that I can actually travel with it. It's not a giant set of two briefcases like my old setup was. So let's have a look at what I'm using, why I'm using it, and how I've got it set up. So the most important thing, obviously, uh, also check this out. Finally, using the GoPro. How cool is that? I'll be doing close and joy fisheye lens shots of pedals close up. Um, so the first most important pedal is obviously a tuner. Uh, silent tuning is like incredibly important. It's like the first time anyone hears you go, that's, yeah, that's you done. <laughs> For quite simply, just like it sounds super unprofessional. No one wants to hear you tuning. Uh, so you need a tuner. You could. Um, instead of having like a dedicated pedal that requires, you know, uh, a power and requires you to have a power supply, you could use one of those like headstock tuners. Um, they work both by getting the vibration through the neck, through the headstock. Uh, the, the issue is they look really doofy to me. I don't know, they look really, <laughs> maybe that's incredibly pretentious, but like they look dumb. Um, I don't know, that's on, like, there's nothing wrong with using them. They just, they're not as cool, they don't look as good. Um, it's also good to have like a, a switch you press to mute. Like you hit that, boom, you're muted. You can deal, do other stuff with that as well. Like if you need to, to swap over a guitar, you mute it there. Like if you can only turn down um, and then tune with a, with a headstock tuner, you can't swap guitars over easily. Uh, if something with your amp goes wrong, you'll be able to mute there, unplug your amp, you know. There's just stuff that goes on. Um, so that's a pet peeve. That's a personal thing. I don't like the headstock tuner. I'm all about, like, pedal tuners. Uh, I use a, a Boss TU3, which is fine. That's, like, it's the only Boss pedal I own anymore, uh, apart from an OC2, which is amazing, which we'll get onto. Uh, you could use like the TC, the Polytune, uh, any 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 pedal tuner is going to do you completely fine. But yeah, silent tuning. If you don't silent tune, you look incredibly unprofessional. So don't do that. That's the first thing in my chain. First thing up, tuner. Obviously, incredibly important. Uh, so it's the bass is the first thing in the chain. Straight into the tuner. Out from that into a compressor pedal. The compressor pedal is the other single most important pedal. In, in the bass player's arsenal. Uh, so compressor. You don't have to go mad with compression. Um, if you're in a metal band that or a funk band, you're probably going to need to be hitting it a little bit harder. Just so... Basically what a compressor does is it takes your signal, it takes all the peaks and, and the valleys, the, the points where you're playing really softly and the points where you're playing really loudly, and it kind of smudges them all together. So the, the, the loud parts, the, where the volume's really hitting, they aren't so loud but also the quiet parts where you're playing really, really lightly gets boosted ever so slightly, just so that everything's at a nice, consistent volume. And that's really, really helpful. Um, 
a lot of people think compressors are like there's this weird thing that I've seen uh, on on forums and videos people think compressors on bass are kind of cheating in a way like like it, it's to cover up that you have bad technique like you can't make your notes consistent so you're using a compressor instead um not really <laughs> like obviously we should be striving for good technique you should have it so that if when you're playing all the notes are coming out nice and even um but like if if you're playing and the notes don't sound even they're not going to sound even through a compressor that's not the sound of them the quality of them isn't going to be affected it's just the volume so you're going to have two inconsistent notes that sound different but they're going to be a similar volume um and the other thing I hear with people compre with people complain about with compressors is you can't play dynamically, but it's the same principle. Like you can play dynamically, you can really like play super light, super nice. But and the quality of that, the sound of that's going to be exactly the same. It's just people will still be able to hear it, you know. Like uh, in in Catfish, we have a song called "Make It Rain" where we're going super super low, like I'm barely playing any notes, I'm basically just getting like harmonics and the upper structure, uh, the upper, uh, what's it called? Oh. But the compressor helps there as well because those notes are still audible, they're still actually, you know, happening. And the thing is, if you want to be like massive, really, really dynamic, where you can go really, really low, have no one hear you and then come back up, you can just turn it off. Just have it as a pedal, switch it on, switch it off. Maybe you turn it on just when you're doing some slap stuff. Let me turn myself up so you can actually hear this. That's the main place where you're going to want it because, like, if you're going from finger style, you put in that. That's a massive spike in volume. That's really going to knock people bandy if you're not keeping it nice and tight. Yeah, compressors are just great. Use them on guitar, use them on bass. Compressors are awesome. They just even out everything. It just makes you sound better. Like, that's what I describe these first two pedals as. These are my sound better buttons. Like, you put them on, you immediately sound better. If you don't sound good already, you're not going to sound... You're not, still not going to sound good. You know, these aren't... sound. These aren't, you know, sound good buttons. They sound better buttons. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, a compressor... Putting a compressor on isn't going to suddenly make you, like, sound like Jacko if you've been playing for three months. It's It's... It's not a magic button, but it's going to smooth out the sound. It's going to make everything nice and nice and tight. Uh, yeah, that's the compressor. That's going into the sans amp. So, Tech Twenty One sans amp. What is this doing? Um, essentially, it's simulating the way it's trying to simulate the way a tube amp sounds, like a cranked, um, potentially a cranked, potentially not cranked, uh, tube amp. So. It's another one of those, it just sounds better. It's a sound better button to me. Um, yeah, just turn it on and it's it warms up the sound. It kind of controls a lot of the high end for me. See, I've got a little bit of EQ on it. I uh, take off a little bit of treble, put on a little, little bit of low end. Um, the blend, I, I just want the sound of this. I don't want any of the clean signal in there. And they recommend for most things you have the blend set all the way to, uh, to wet. So you're just getting the sound of this. Uh, drive up here, not a massively driven sound. These are the same settings I pretty much use for um, for the solo stuff that's just bass. And I cut uh, cut a little bit of low end, just keep that flat. You don't want too much low end when you're doing lots of chordy stuff or else it starts getting muddy. Um, so don't worry about that too much. Uh, presence. Cranked. I don't know, it just sounds better to me. I'll show you what that sounds like with... Yeah, because like my favorite amp of all time is, is the 79 amp egg SVT. It just sounds... It, nothing else sounds like it. And this is like... This is getting close to that or closer to that while, you know, not having to carry around an SVT and, an, like, an 8x10, you know, cabinet. 
Because that would suck. That would not fit in a Ford Galaxy, so... Um, we're not with all our other gear, as well, at least. Um, yeah. The compressor and the sand amp, these are on, like, all the time. Um, never turn these off. As I say, you could turn the compressor off if you really wanted to do... Uh, to, to play with the dynamics a lot more, but you don't really need to. That's the basic sound. Um, I have my amp flat. There's no EQ on the amp whatsoever. Um, I've got an Aguilar Tone Hammer 500. Not here with me, unfortunately. It's with the other band. Um, and then just a 1x12, the Aguilar S112, I think it is. Whatever their 1x12 one, the, one amp is. Um, yeah, have it completely frat. Frat? Can be completely fraternity. Uh, have it completely flat on the EQ, just go straight in. Um, one trick one of my bass teachers at ACM showed us is if you really want just the sound of the bass, like this is all bollocks to you, you don't like the pedal thing at all. Um, if you don't even want the, the preamp section of the amp, you just want to ignore all of that completely. If you put your bass input, go from the bass straight into the return part of the effects loop, you just completely bypass, if your amp's got an effects loop, you can just bypass all of the preamp stuff, all of the EQ on there, just just ignore it. Um, I've done this many times on um, when we've been playing gigs and someone else's amp there, and we're using someone else's amp, and like, I don't know how it works, I don't know what, like, what exactly the EQ, like, it says low mid, but is that like, 250 or is that 1k what is that um so i just start, I, just, I just go straight into the to the return of the effects loop and then don't have to worry about that if it's got on built com, built uh, built in compression like some of the ashdown amps do or some of the tc amps do you can just ignore that completely um and that's great that's a really cool trick if that's what you want he used to say like you buy a th like thousand pound two thousand pound bass and you put it through a 500 pound you know random amplifier, um, it's not going to sound as good, so just try and ignore as much of the amplifier as possible in a lot of situations. Um, so there you go, there's my tip for if you're playing on someone else's amp you've never played before. Um, if you've got your sound set beforehand, I mean, you could literally just take a DI straight from this and it would basically be the same sound. It's all coming from that sans amp and the compressor, as well as the bass, which is obviously the other important, <laughs> important aspect of this. Yes, the much overlooked, also the thing you actually play with your hands, uh, also important. Um, but that's basically the tone, so what are these other things I have on here? So, this is all for soloing. Um, so this is my overdrive, this is the grey channel by Earthquaker Devices. This is a two channel um, overdrive. You've got the green channel, you've got the red channel. Um, this is gain, this is volume. Um, and you can also, really cool, you can change the kind of clipping that it has. So on this one, I've got no diode clipping, so it's just a bit nicer and smoother. This isn't going to sound exactly um, how it is through the amp, because obviously the way the gain structures interact with each other, like going into a power amp is different than just going straight into my computer, which I'm doing here, going into my sound card. So this isn't going to be exactly how I would like it to sound, but you'll get the, you get the idea, you get the idea. Um, this is just like a nice transparent overdrive, it's not too gainy. Um, you can hear it does, if you play really softly or you turn the volume down, it just doesn't clip at all. Um, that's something to watch with this one. This isn't really a problem when you're going into an amplifier, because of that same reason, but... Sometimes it just doesn't clip at all, and you need to <laughs> you need to hit it a bit harder. Um, so yeah, that's I have that on the no diode clipping, and then the red channel. Uh, I have on the LED clipping. You can have it on the MOSFET as well, which is cool. But that's obviously a lot more aggressive, and like um, yeah, that's just for soloing. With a lot of, with um a lot of these pedals, unless they have a blend as in you can have the clean signal and the and the, the affected signal. A lot of the time you're just gonna lose way too much low end to, for it to be really useful. Um, and at the end of the day, that's what your job is. Your job is to, 
is to be the low end and really hammer you know the 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 fundamentals the harmony of the song um so this is just for for soloing for me if you want an overdrive pedal where you can um have it on the dark glass stuff is amazing so i have a b7k uh the b7k ultra which i use for metal um and i'm probably going to get the vmt the vintage microtube um probably for this next catfish album it's a lot rockier um it wants a bit more overdrive for me i think the bass parts want a bit more drive um but that's a, that's a real like picture like a, a cranked svt like you know when you really like hammer a tube amp and it starts to warm up um but it's still got that blend knob so you can have the original signal in there so it doesn't get completely lost um in the old days before we had like these sexy pedals with their blend features we, a lot of the guys would have two amps which is amazing um justin chancellor from tool his setup was clean signal going into the the galleon kruger stuff he was playing through so you get all the clean stuff all the delays all the modulation effects and then he'd have a guitar amp there as well, just like, oh, maybe he, actually, maybe Justin Chancellor had two uh, Galleon Kruger setups, and then he had, uh, like, the MB800, the MB800, whatever it was, um, would go into two of those, and then have one of them be, um, just have all the drive stuff, and then one clean, so you don't lose any of the low end, you still got that original signal in there, and then you've got metal-driven sound, um, but a lot of guys go into guitar amps, uh, I think Alex Webster from Cannibal Corpse does that. I know Nolly was doing something like that as well for a while. Um, yeah, just like go into to like an Ampeg SVT for your clean sound and then go into like a Mesa Boogie Mark V um, for a drive sound because like guitar amps drive just sounds a lot better a lot of the time. So yeah, why not? If you have two amps, that's a great way to do that. And you know, a, a, a splitter for your signal. Um, but yes, with Catfish, blues rock band, I just just need my drive pedal just for when I'm soloing. It comes in there. Um, by that same example, we've got reverb. Uh, so so from the so we go from the sans amp into the drive pedal, the grey channel, into the delay. This is the the flashback. Um, I just have it nice on a nice like subtle tape echo. <laughs> Doesn't need much more than that. Reverb again. Just a spring reverb kind of. It's the kind of subtle thing. And obviously you got that with the with the effects as well. Um occasionally I'll turn these on just in the middle of the set. Like if you not want like if you want the note to, to kind of ring out there, so um, in our band we've we've got a, a Hammond. Paul plays a you know Hammond organ, and that's just you press the button and it makes a low D forever. You know, just, um, it's kind of hard to compete with that as a bass player. Like as much, no matter how much compression you put on it, um, like a note's not gonna last forever. Last longer than you know an undistorted guitar, but like even a distorted guitar is gonna ring out way longer than than, than the bass is because it's, it's just like put new strings on it that helps a lot as well. But um, this kind of helps me just like keep some of that the, the low notes going while those guys are, are playing. So I still want to be doing something. I want to be filling out the sound a little bit. Maybe I don't have to. Maybe I just let the Hammond player do his thing. But. Uh, <laughs> Um, yeah, I've sometimes put the, the 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 reverb on, um, and yeah, and you go out of the Hall of Fame uh, into the amp, and that's it. Take a DI out of that. That's your signal. Um, yeah, it's a really simple board. It's a really simple setup. Um, I kind of need to buy two of these because these are on every single board I I use when I play in a metal band. Like the Sans amp and the and the MXR are still going to be the solo bass things when it's like. Big old looper, like massive reverb and delay. Like I have a Strymon timeline and an Empress reverb I use um, for that when I'm really trying to be ambient and stuff. Um, yeah, they don't they don't travel very well though. Um, yeah, 
four overdrive pedals because I like my overdrive. Got uh, an OCD, um, the Tumnus, which is a uh, uh, Centaur clone, clone Centaur uh, clone, which is nice, um, and a Tube Screamer, an 808. I, why? Because they're fun. I don't really need them. I, don't really, I only ever use them in the really self-indulgent stuff. So yeah, um, this is the Catfish pedal board. This is the travel pedal board. Um, hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully the, the choice and the selection of stuff made a lot of sense. Um, yes, enjoy. I will see you next week, which is going to be very, very special. Um, we're going to try something quite a bit different um, for for next week's video. It's going to take a lot of work, but I hope you enjoy it, so I look forward to that. Uh, like, comment, subscribe if you like this, you want to see next week's very exciting video, and I'll see you then.